The Chinese technology company Lenovo is currently in talks to acquire both IBM's low-end server division and Google's Motorola smartphone brand, but that won't stop them from throwing a few bones the way of the mobile PC gamer. Is the Lenovo Y50 enough machine to satisfy your competitive gaming needs? Let's find out. Hello everybody, welcome back to Thieges Notebook Review. What I'm reviewing today is the Lenovo Y50. This notebook retails for around an even thousand bucks and is marketed towards the competitive gamer with aggressive styling and red accents that surround the keyboard. Influences of this approach are meant to remind consumers of its beleaguered competitor Alienware, hoping to erase this foe from the minds of potential buyers. The 15.6 inch notebook comes complete with an AC adapter that likes to fall out of the box when you remove the notebook and comes with with little to no documentation, which is okay since so few PC gamers will need it anyway. Despite its relatively thin dimensions, the seemingly low weight of just over 5 pounds is spread out over an extra wide chassis, making the notebook feel heavier than it is. The screen can only be lifted easily with two hands, and the accompanying 135 watt AC adapter complements the heft and gives us a short cord to work with. This then is the Lenovo Y50 Gaming Notebook. It houses the Intel Core i5-4200H CPU, 8 gigs of DDR3L memory, a 1TB 5400RPM hybrid hard drive, and a GeForce GTX 860M GPU with 2 gigs of GDDR5 speedy fast VRAM, all underneath a 15.6 inch 1080p matte LED screen. It's all powered by a 4-cell lithium cylinder battery that gives us about 4 hours of internet work use, or 3 hours of just watching YouTube. Let's see what all those holes in the side do. On the front, we have some indication lights. On the right, we get a speed if out, headset jack, card reader, a USB 2.0 port, and a lock slot. On the back, we get two fake vents, and on the left is the AC input, LAN, HDMI, and two USB 3.0 ports for a total of three USBs. Notice the lack of an optical drive. Removing the bottom cover is not as simple as most, as it has many screws and grips to the rear of the notebook, so it has to be finagled in order to be taken off. When the bottom is revealed, we can see that the actual fans are in the middle of the body, venting out into the display. Also, the Wi-Fi card is from Intel, which has excellent range, the only two memory slots are both occupied, and the hard drive is made by Western Digital. The outer finish of the Y50 is completely covered from bottom to top in plastic that's designed to look like scratched metal. It's smooth to the touch and will accumulate fingerprints rather easily. The inside finish around the keyboard is completely matte and then glossy at the top, near the display, and all around the screen. None of that is fingerprint resistant either, not even the keyboard keys or the touchpad. The 15.6 inch screen is not much to boast about, except for the 1080p resolution. Text and graphics look very sharp when seen from a comfortable viewing distance. Unfortunately, this notebook suffers from the Windows 8.1 blurry text API. Microsoft has acknowledged the issue as it plagues every PC using Windows 8, but you would have thought we would have seen a fix by now. Getting back to the Y50, this is, in fact, the first 1080p screen that I've used that has such narrow viewing angles. It still gets sufficiently bright and dim, and tilts back just far enough to get a good angle while you're using the notebook on your lap. The matte finish will also mute reflections, allowing for a comfortable viewing experience. The keyboard keys on the Y50 are rather stiff and have a short amount of travel. You'll immediately run into a few problems coming from any other manufacturer's keyboard, but you can get used to it over time. My quick light typing style did have problems depressing some keys, but with muscle memory, I think those problems will evaporate over time. The numpad might not have an extra large zero key for easy number crunching, but the enter and plus keys are still oversized. The typing pad also does illuminate red with two different brightness settings, which is welcome for dimly lit environs and easier on the eyes than the HP NVDV6's one brightness fits all. The touchpad on this Lenovo is the exact same story from the Acer I reviewed recently. It has a large surface area and is sensitive enough to get in the way while you're using your typically lazy typing style where your hands are not elevated over the keyboard like they should be. The whole surface area does respond to your touch, even over the buttons, so left or right clicking will be a pain if your finger exhibits even the slightest amount of travel while you're trying to click. You can either stick to tapping or plug in a mouse. Luckily, it can be disabled via hotkey, and the setting is remembered when you reboot the machine. 
the JBL speakers on the Y50 deserve as much praise as the Yoga. The sound is crisp, well-defined, and relatively voluminous. The bass line from Rage Against the Machine's Calm Like a Bomb comes through clearly, but your MP3 boombox will still outpace the Y50 in the decibels, and deep bass, like a perfect circle's The Package, is still very weak. Still, it'll get the job done for most gaming and media consumption with nice stereo separation. Do note that there's only a headset jack or speed if in, so you're out of luck with your headset without a 2 to 1 converter. When it comes to overall system performance, the Y50 ain't no slouch. The Core i5 is combined with a hybrid hard drive and handily speeds through browsing and applications with ease. When you take the 8 gigs of memory into account, you have yourself a nice little light video production rig. You won't feel the need to upgrade anything for quite some time. On to gaming. When it comes to gaming, you might think that having just a Core i5 would be a bad thing, but you'd be wrong to assume so. The Y50 handled every game I threw at it at high detail settings, reaching 60 frames per second most of the time. It's good enough to be able to play competitively with your online rivals. Also, despite the fact that this Core i5 has an astounding 47 watt TDP, the heat on the bottom is kept to a minimum and will always be comfortable to use on your lap. Away from the plug, however, the same typical story unravels as half of the power is cut to the GTX 860M, and so your frame rates are cut in half as well. The battery life will then be drained from a full charge after about an hour and 45 minutes, and there is absolutely no heat that comes from the bottom when gaming on battery power. Stay tuned after the conclusion for more gameplay footage. In conclusion, students get a thumbs down, but only because it's out of your price range. The Y50 is also borderline heavy, and the keyboard will take some getting used to for typing out your homework. Battery life won't be much of an issue, but there are cheaper notebooks available that last longer. Also, the included GPU will only help serve as a distraction that you don't need. Casual gamers get a thumbs up. This notebook is at the top of your price range, and it has more than enough power to trudge through whatever title you want to play. The system performance is an absolute gas, and the extended battery life is a definite boon. Competitive gamers can settle for the Y50 if you want to save some coin. For only $100 more, there's a Y50 model available with an i7 CPU and an included external optical drive. And then of course, the next tier of performance is just another $200 above that, which is very much worth it for the much better GPUs, displays, and internal optical drives. I would also only recommend the i7 version to the desktop replacement user. You'll definitely benefit from the i7's power for your video production and the included external optical drive. For only $100 more, there's no reason to stick with this model, unless it's on sale. For the average home user, there's way more power and heft than you need. The battery power and matte finish on the screen are accommodating for mobility around the house, but the price and aggressive styling take this notebook out of the equation. This has been a review of the Lenovo Y50 Gaming Notebook here on Thiege's Notebook Review. Go ahead and thumbs me up, drop a comment below, share this video, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and you guys, have a good night.